something tells me that getting the shots and the editing for that little 12 second intro took longer than actually doing research for the content. Hey, what's up guys? So recently Microsoft released the Xbox One X and this is the console that Microsoft claims is the most powerful console ever made. And you would really expect better performance from it, huh? 30 FPS still, really? AAA games coming out at 30 FPS on the most powerful console in the world. Just It just blows my mind. It is also the smallest Xbox ever made. And it's something that Microsoft just wants to make a 4K powerhouse. It's something Microsoft just wants to make. Oh, think of Microsoft, guys. They just wanted to make this for us. But how does the One X stand up against a PC? Something that can produce 4K and has been producing 4K for a while now in terms of tech years. So without further ado, let's begin. So the term exclusive was used a lot during the game section of the previous video comparing the PS4 Pro and Switch to the One X because Microsoft really wanted to boast how much exclusive games they had. Is that really what they wanted to boast? Microsoft hasn't been boasting about exclusives for years. They said like two or three years ago that they were putting all their exclusives on the PC now. Where are you getting this? But unfortunately, a portion of those exclusive console games are on PC, like Player Unknown's Battlegrounds and Cuphead. <laughs> unfortunately, Jesus Christ. We're just sh we're showing our hand right off the bat, huh? And in fact, they were first. Now, of course, there are some games that are not on the PC, like Forza and Halo. Ah, uh, that must be awkward. But there are some PC-exclusive games, like certain Valve games like Gary's Mod and CSGO. The biggest advantage that the PC has to the One X is that for certain games, you can mod them. This has nothing to do with what you're saying, but what what is wrong with your mouse placement? Why? What? Is this actually you playing? You're only giving yourself like an inch of space on the mouse. My guy, what are you doing? And we all know what modding is. It makes games amazing. Whether your intentions are to add cool new things that were not in the game, or add totally new things, or make the game better, or fix glitches, add things to the map. Well, I mean, unless you're Bethesda who just wants to take people's mods and sell them. Modding to some people is very essential. Now, there are some people that don't really need modding, but it's just a little cool feature to go along with the game. Modding is an excellent feature. I agree with that. Modding is very, very fun. And especially the game that you're showing right now, COD World at War. I still play World at War sometimes because of the modding community. Mods can make games so much better and last so much longer on the PC. It's a shame that companies try to get so fucking greedy with bringing mods to the consoles, but I guess that's just the side effect of having the entire platform run by a giant corporation as opposed to just smaller developers doing whatever they want. But recently though, we've had some issues with modding amongst the community, like Rockstar trying to take away OpenIV or Bethesda trying to charge us for certain mods. Okay, well, two things wrong with what you just said. First of all, it wasn't Rockstar that tried to get rid of modding on GTA 5, it was Take-Two that did that. And then also, paid mods were on the console versions for Bethesda games. That's why it was so egregious. They were literally taking something that was free on PC and made it paid on console and paid on PC. And I'll talk about two very important things that come to games, because Bill, I love ya. You and Gabe are like papas, we are your children, you are like gods to us. Uh, no, absolutely not. If you're a corporate slave or a fanboy, yeah, you probably worship these people, but if you're a logical thinking person, no, absolutely not. But Gabe has a few special surprises that make PC better. I think people know where I'm going with this by now. For the next couple of minutes, he just talks about the differences between the stores and Honestly, there's nothing really wrong with what he says. That is, until... So my PC has an Intel i5 with a GTX 980, 3.5 GHz, 16 GB of RAM, and 4 TB of memory. The One X is running a custom engine that's made by AMD, which is called the Scorpio Engine. <laughs> One pair of pants later. <clears throat> <clears throat> this was, this is, uh, this is wrong. 
It's around the equivalent to a GTX 1080. It has 12 gigabytes of GDDR5 RAM. Now, if that is true that the GTX is around 1080, it's not. <laughs> it's so obviously not. That means that it's beating my computer. And let's pause for a second. For those of you that are PC nerds, you know how much some 1080s cost. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I was trying to come up with a witty retort and all I could say was yeah. I just I can't get over this. You actually think an Xbox One X is equivalent to a 1080. <laughs> Bro, just stop. And if you're wondering how much a 1080 costs, some of them can go around for as much as a 1X or even more. If you just search up GTX 1080 on Google, you'll see some for $560, some for $600. So, I'm gonna go into that more. Oh, please do. I have to hear this. I, I have to hear what you have to say about the 1080 versus the One X. For those of you that don't know, um, here are the benchmarks for the GTX 1080. Just look at these benchmarks and uh, tell me that this is equivalent to the Xbox One X. But that's like a really good thing to note about when it comes to the One X and when you want to decide what you want to get. This video is just, I, I can't, bro. I just can't. That is pretty impressive, Microsoft. I have to give you that. <laughs> it's only impressive because it's theoretical. It's not true. I would compare the Xbox One X's performance to maybe a 1050. 1050 Ti, maybe? If we're talking about 4K gaming? If we're talking about 1080p gaming, it, I mean, it gets fucking smoked by those cards that I just mentioned, that I just mentioned. But if we're talking about 4K, like 4K, 30 FPS, I would say the Xbox One X is somewhere around a 1050 Ti, or maybe, maybe a 1060. But that's 4K, 30 FPS. If we're talking about 1440p or 1080p, no, it's not even close. But let me counterclaim myself right now. A GTX that's on a PC has a lot more to do. There's a lot more power that's needed because, you know, a PC is doing more than just playing games. I see this all the time from console fanboys and people who just don't know what they're talking about. People who say that, oh, the PC, there's more going on. The, the console's just running the game. The PC, there's all this stuff going in the background, so it hurts performance. When really, no, both of those things are wrong. The console has multitasking as well. You can multitask apps, and even if you're not multitasking apps, you're just playing a game, you have messaging things going in the background, you have a launcher going in the background, you have internet connection going in the background, you have the social services going in the background, social services, oof. But you have like the friend system going in the background. It's not just the game. And it's the same way on the PC, arguably even less so, because you can manage these things better. The One X is only playing games. Except it's not. The things that a PC is doing in the background while playing a game are roughly the same things that a console is doing in the background. Yes, there's more things happening on a PC in the background but that doesn't usually hurt performance at all. And also, we are consumers. We are not companies. We don't have special partnerships like Microsoft does. So this engine that is the equivalent to a 1080... I'm sorry, this is the gameplay that you used? That's the game? Okay. May have been a lot cheaper for Microsoft to manufacture. So that's also something to note. How though? How do you, how do you justify that? Like, like, I want to know where you heard an Xbox One X is equivalent to a GTX 1080, and I also want to know how you think it's somehow way cheaper for Microsoft to manufacture them than it is for NVIDIA, or, I don't know, whoever's making GTX 1080s now. I want to know how you justify a $600, $700 graphics card being inside a console that is only $500, and somehow Microsoft sees that as a good business model, even though it's also just blatantly not what's actually happening. That doesn't mean that the GTX that's on the One X is weak. It is really, really good. Well, yeah, no, a 10, oh my god. If there actually was a 1080 in the One X, it would be the same as other 180s. That's how, t that's how graphics cards work. How do you not know this? But once again, that's something to sort of just keep in mind. Now, the One X only having one terabyte. One terabyte is a lot, but games are going to get a 4K update, which is going to be a little bit massive. For something like Halo 5 Guardians, it was 15 gigabytes. So in total, that's 70 gigs. 
and Forza 7 is 100 gigabytes, so that is something to think about. Forza 7 is 100 gigabytes? Why? But it's not really a big deal because you do have one terabytes to play around with and if you have to you can go out and get another hard drive. So far with the games I've downloaded I've used up around 700 gigs. I understand that it's in 4k but how can a racing game be bigger than GTA 5? Because it's newer. But, you know. Oh goody, let's hear this recap. Let's go over all of the amazing things that you've taught me today. So I wanted to see if it's possible to match up with the One X specs and make a PC that's around $500, under $500, because I've seen comments on Twitter and Facebook on like news articles about the One X and people saying that you could make a PC that's as much or even with better specs. Yes, absolutely you can. If you're trying to match the Xbox One X's power, you can 100% make a cheaper PC. I don't know why you would want to match the Xbox One X's power when for that same price tag, you could go above the One X, but if you are just solely trying to match the One X, you can 100% do that for less than $500 easily. So I tried hunting for parts on Amazon and when I was halfway with doing it, I just realized that it's not possible. It is 100% possible and I will do it right now. 20 minutes later. Look, I did it. Look at that, I did it. I know I've been leaning a lot towards the PC in this video, but I have to be honest, when it comes to the One X, the price, even though it is a lot for a console, if you look at it from a PC perspective, that is not a lot of money. Wait, 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 guys, wait. The Xbox One X is $500, and here in your cart, you have $500 of PC parts that match the Xbox One X. The only thing that's missing here is a CPU, and you can easily shave some money off of these parts and make room for a CPU. You literally just proved the point you said was not possible with an image on the screen proving the point wrong. So I thought, okay, let me just add up what the basic price would be for all of these parts. When I covered like 70% of it, I, I got this number. Okay, first of all, I don't believe you because you literally just showed in your Amazon cart under $500 of parts, only thing you were missing was a CPU and now that suddenly jumped up to $1,000. So you seriously fucked something up somewhere. But when it really comes down to these two things, it comes down to a couple questions. How much are you willing to spend and are you gonna do more than just gaming? Because if you're gonna be a gaming YouTuber, I would highly recommend getting a gaming PC instead of getting like a cheap laptop and a 1X. What the hell is wrong with your aspect ratio? Having a gaming PC doesn't just mean that you can game on it, it also benefits with other things like editing. There's a lot of power that you need to render videos, especially for those people that want to go 4K. You're gonna have to have a lot of power. Yeah, that's a really specific thing though. You're comparing the price of a gaming PC to the price of a gaming and streaming PC now, which are two different subjects. Focus on one thing, please. And you cannot render a 4K video on a $300 laptop. It's just not gonna work out. Yeah, nobody was talking about that until literally just now. One of two things is gonna happen. You're gonna be like five years older than you are from now, or your PC's just gonna explode. A few, a few things wrong with that. First of all, the obvious one, nobody was talking about that until just now. You're Now you're just trying to come up with reasons why you shouldn't buy a PC. But second of all, if you want to be a gaming YouTuber, you don't want to be doing things in 4K. 4K is just not the standard and it's not worth investing all that money into 4K editing and stuff that's like capable of fast 4K editing and rendering and stuff. It's, it's just not the standard yet. If you're someone that doesn't really care about the PC aspect and you just want to play games, that's where the One X shines. No, it's not. If you don't want, if you don't care about being a, a fucking YouTuber and you just want to play games, you can still have better performance with games on a PC for less money. But like I said before, there's a lot of exclusive games that you would find only on Steam or on another browser or retro games and emulators and stuff like that. And in the long run, you are saving a lot of money with, you know, that Steam sale that I mention all the time. That's true. Games are cheaper on PC, online is free, there's a better game selection, there's way more backwards compatibility. Just on an objective 
standpoint, from an just from an objective standpoint, the PC has more for you in terms of gaming. Even if you're not going to be a fucking 4K gaming YouTuber. Also, I love how you showed that $1,007 price tag, but you didn't actually show what you did to get there. You just showed a number. But yeah, uh, Phil Spencer, I, I I still have to say you, you did a pretty good job. I'm, I'm proud of you, buddy. Hey, uh, no, Phil Spencer literally didn't do any of the things that you've said in this video, but okay. But that does leave a question, though, about the future of resolutions and visuals and the next generation of products. Like I've said between these two videos, one of the main focuses for companies seems to be to make games look visually better. That's clearly not the priority right now, because we're still running games at sub-30 FPS. Right now, I think companies are way too focused on resolution and not the actual stability of the game. Because we have games like Anthem that look gorgeous and amazing in screenshots. In motion, they fall apart. But what happens when we pass the limit that the human eye can perceive because there is a limit? Oh no, you're not- oh god, not again. That's why it's sort of hard for some people to notice the difference between 4K and 1080p unless they have a side-by-side -side comparison. Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? If you can't notice the difference between 4K and 1080p, you're either lying to yourself or someone showed you a, the wrong image. That is such a massive difference. It is so obviously noticeable. That's why it was hard for even me to notice the difference. So when we do hit that limit, are we just gonna go in a step where Nintendo's taking it, or we're just gonna have to be innovative and just make products cooler because of cool features, sort of like how smartphones do that? Yes, please, please, let's do that! That's a good idea! Stop focusing on graphics and start giving us good games again. Stop making everything a sandbox or a third-person action cover stealth game. I'm so tired of games being so repetitive and just not giving a shit about the gameplay because it looks nice. They spent time making it look nice at fucking 26 FPS. Only the future can tell, and also money. So yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Listen, listen, guys. If you want a PC that's comparable to the Xbox One, or even better than the Xbox One, you can absolutely do it for less than $500. I showed you that build earlier in this video. That's 100% doable. What is it with console fanboys and now talking about the human eye? Like, what is the deal? Am I the only one who's noticed that? When the Xbox One and the PS4 came out, everyone was talking about, oh, the perform like, graphics don't matter. The graphics don't matter. It's about the games. But now that consoles are allegedly catching up to PCs, even though they're not, now people are all like, oh, the human eye. The human eye can't see that performance on PC. It's, it's the best on consoles still. Like... I, uh, maybe it's just the videos that I've been responding to recently, but this is the second video in a couple weeks where someone has brought up the human eye argument against the PC. If you want to play on console, play on console. But if your intention is to have games running the best they can, you should be on PC. And if you want to build a PC on a budget that can run games better than the Xbox One X, you can 100% do that. And there are hundreds of guides and build videos out there. Anyways, that's all from me, I guess. Thank you guys for watching. Feel free to sub or follow me on Twitter or on Twitch. I don't know. I'm just exhausted. I've recorded three of these videos today. My brain hurts.